was he had unfortunate issues was Rob Sanders. Right. And right. that was it. But and we did mention him, and he was still very fast. Yeah. Um, you know, had the incident there in about the mid stages. But all in all, a good night of racing. Not a lot of tore up race cars. Um, night number no. two. Every late model finished. Every late model or finished, except for except for one, but well, it wasn't bro. It wasn't, wasn't broken, broke. right? Which that's nice. That's good because hopefully we can build and get a little over. You know, maybe we can get three, four, five more late models here for tomorrow, and have you have twenty plus cars, three thousand dollars on the line tomorrow night, Mike. Yeah, three thousand dollars. That's no joke. No, you know not that's at all. when most of the classes out here pay maybe a thousand dollars for a big race for a late model. You're tripling that. Right, absolutely. And all the bonus money that we're going to hand out for fast qualifying times, you know, the Dash paid 100 bucks to win tonight. Um, you know, it's, it's little things like that that you build on that, that it'll bring this class back to uh, dominance like it has been on the West Coast for so long. The late models struggling, especially here in the state of California. There's a lot of them parked around the state. Well, obviously there's a lot of them parked because we had 16 of them come out tonight for one race. Right. And most of them haven't raced all season. Well, and, and that's the thing. A lot of the tracks aren't putting these guys on the schedule. Um, I, I think that, you know, it's going to take us some work to get the late models back to what they have been historically in this state and up and down the West Coast. Yep. But, but I will say it can be done. Yep. And we talked with a few people earlier today before the races, and a couple of them came up with some very creative ideas very. to uh, enhance the uh, offerings for these drivers mm -hmm. to to uh, come out and run, you know, dangle that carrot and making that carrot a little more fruitful for these guys to come out and run. And I, I think a lot of those that we were coming up with and talking with other people, put them in. It's some of them are going to work. It's interesting to see some some viewpoints and, and opinions on what makes and it was from different people. That. It wasn't um, just from racers. I know that you great. were privy to a conversation that took place very early in the day before any racing started. Uh, we, we're not going to say anything other than there is something big in the make for that division. And when that time comes, we're going to release that. But I'm telling you right now, it is going to change the game for the late models in the Western United States. Yeah, tonight with this weekend is kind of a teaser Absolutely so to speak is, yes. of I, my whole body is covered in chills and right now knowing it's, what's it's coming. ironic because <clears throat> all you guys that are listening in 2019 you're seeing what you know a glimpse of what can happen well as 2020 comes you're going to get a clear view of what's coming and with and the lay bottle there's division. something coming i'm telling you that right now it's going to be a phenomenal thing it's going to blow your mind um I don't even know all of it, and it blows my mind already. <laughs> That's well, the crazy part because yeah. you've got to keep everything close to the pocket until everything's set in place right. and ready to go because you, you don't want to sit there and say, oh, yada, yada, yada's coming or yada, yada, yada's doing this, mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen. Right, because if it doesn't, then but you who know, looks th dumb is the person I, who said I'll it. I'll tell you, uh, I'll say this, Mike. Yeah, Anderson. I'm listening. I'm definitely listening. Listen to these words before we close the post-race show. Everyone will be here. Everyone will be here for what's coming. With well, that, let's let's everyone who's anyone will try to make it out. Will do their best to make it out here. Everyone will be here. Yeah, there'll Kay. be a few that that don't for whatever reasons. No, but they'll be here. <laughs> I <I'll laughs> promise you, it's coming. Uh, with that, we're gonna close the post race show. We you know we talked. I, I want hey real quick. Because I said it when you were down in pit lane. Run of the night. If you had to give an award for the, the best run of the night to any driver, who do you give that award to tonight? Nicholas Johnson. Absolutely. In. Absolutely. Starting. 14th. Well, leading his heat race and the front end, both front yes. spindles break. Yes. Both. Right. Not one. Both. <laughs> yeah. It literally fell flat on his nose. And it put him in deep in the field. Had the to feature. start in the, in the dead last in the B feature. Yep. Drives through. Able to win, to get up there and move in. Mm -hmm. Comes out for the, the A main. Does what he's got to do, starting 14th. Wins it. Pretty impressive. Who do you give the hard luck award to? There's a few of those. There's a couple, <laughs> there's a couple there's that can qualify. There's a couple. Um, the young lady in the 98 in the super late model. 
She had a hard time all night tonight. Don Mead, the number 99 in the hobby stop. Yes. Started up front. Yes. Finished very far back. Yeah. I talked to him afterwards. He said, I had to pull the car off because I could not see. Who do you give the hard luck award to in the IMCA Modifieds? That's a that's a tough one. It was a good field. They actually had yeah. a good night. But you yeah. know who I would give it to? Huh. Based on what happened early in the feature? Robbie Sawyer. Yeah. Having to start dead last after the uh the, the mix up the down mix there in turns one and two yep. and pinballed around and yeah. had, he had a tough night of racing tonight. But I'd also give it to uh mm. Jerry Flippo in the thirteen. Yes, another guy we talked about. They had a real shot to do this. Real and fast then car and unfortunately got stuck with some slower cars well and that's got the pinballed. Thing. Well, you get caught up in those cars and you got nowhere to go. It's it's frustrating, and you yeah. can't just go out and wreck somebody. Yep. But and we talked um, about that. Definitely somebody that would qualify for that award as well. We, but we talked about how, you know, you can be the fastest car out here. Yep. But if you get a pill draw and your your pill draw is number ninety nine and they go to eighty five, you know, you're starting yeah, way yeah. back in the back. Right. It, it doesn't help. Right. And what's great about the Budweiser Nationals? Tomorrow's a clean slate. We got to do it all over again. Yeah. You know. And you're more educated. You got yeah. The you've drivers got a, and teams have got an idea what this track is going to do, and they've got an idea of their competition. Absolutely. You know that's a big thing. They know. Okay, I need to stay away from this guy, and I need to follow that guy. And you know there was things today. There was a couple cars that I swear to God somebody put some big old magnets to them, and they just there was, yes absolutely they had to suck up and pump <laughs> off of each other one way or another just to let them know hey I'm here still right. But Another great thing about day number two, we've got the pro stocks coming in, and no more no mod lights. So the mod or not mod lights, no more American stocks. American stocks are gone. Tomorrow we're going to add the pro stocks to the card. It's going to be a phenomenal night of racing here on night number two here from the Budweiser Nationals in Bakersfield, California, for Moxie Media Promotions and Mike Patterson. I'm Corey Penfold. Join us right back here at Bakersfield Speedway tomorrow night. Racing starts at five. Get here early to get your seat. This place is going to fill up quick, fast, and in a hurry. And we are going to do it big time for some big time money. Yeah, there's going to be lots of money, lots of fast cars getting ready to go, put some work, putting some work in on their on the cars, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun tomorrow. There's going to be quite a few guys that are, uh, you know, going to be motivated because of the the format. Not only the format, but their lack of showing. Their pride was hurt tonight, and they're going to, you know, want to come out and and show something and say, hey. That was a fluke. I am not, you know, Joe Schmo back runner. I'm supposed to be up towards the front. Well, we'll see if they can pull it off. We're going to do it again. Qualifying 5 o'clock tomorrow right here at Bakersfield Speedway. Once again, for Mox Media Promotions, I'm Corey Penfold. I'm Mike Patterson. And we are out of here. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Thanks for listening, you guys. 34th Annual Budweiser Nationals. Racing starts at 5 tomorrow Yeah, night. please chime in, you guys, on the chat line when you're listening to this. If you have any questions about the track, or about what's going on, chime in. We'll be more than happy to answer it tomorrow during the pre-race or during the show tomorrow. Don't be afraid to chime in. We always like to hear from you guys. Have a good night, race fans. Thanks for good listening. Good night.